Okay. That's uh, I don't see it glitching. So I, that was the first time it's done that to me uh, on there. But um, okay. So David, I won't try to keep you long. Okay. Um, but uh, no, I, I think you're right. It's not a lot of contractors out there. Well, first off, as contractors, we almost don't want to spend any money. Okay. We don't don't yeah. we don't want to spend any money. You know. And then, um, and then we're skeptical. Uh, I think I'm starting to, okay. And then we're skeptical. So you get a lot of them that just don't want to get back to investing in themselves. They don't want to, you know? And, um, and, and in the end, it hurts all of us. Because if they, if they, if they screw up and they do wrong, it hurts us as an industry, not just as an individual. Yep, hundred percent agree. I think that I think that what's the scary part for a lot of uh, contractors, especially, is that the market does go up and down a lot. It does, um, but a lot of that can actually be mitigated by just investing, like you said, when the times are good, just putting that back into your business, like. How are you going to target customers when things are slower? You know, how are you going to uh, make sure that you do have good relationships with your customers when times are slower? Because right. if you put a little bit of extra effort in, you know, when times are really good, then you can you can hedge yourself against those hard times too. So it it's just it's a funny thing, but yeah, like it's a it's definitely like a a scarcity mindset, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I'm just it. I'm gonna try to go a little bit closer. Hold on here. You're good now. Go a little bit closer here. Okay. I uh, hopefully hopefully this does better. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. All right. So uh yeah, uh headset against that and um um so are are you one are you an individual that, that likes to reinvest in himself and, and learn new things? Yeah, so right now, one of the things that I'm actually doing is learning how to do ads, which is something that I've never really gotten into. So but I'm learning it for a few different reasons. I'm learning it so that I can use it to um, send targeted ads for other people's businesses and, you know, potentially get paid for that. Okay. But also, if, to, if worse comes to worse, um, I can target ads for people to come to my business, too. Um, but you don't even need to learn ads or how to use Facebook ads or like Google AdWords in order to do that. You could pay someone to do that for you. Right. But it's hard for people to, like you said, like that requires some money. And <laughs> the truth is that they do work. Ads do work, especially the targeting now, but like putting that initial investment, it's like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know what's going to happen. So it's just like a very scared way of having a business, which right. is, isn't good it's a business. No. And, and, and with you doing that, have you seen some returns on yeah. that? Yeah, I have. I have. It's actually been really successful. If your landing pages are good and if your targeting's right, then it's like it's going to work. You're going to get people coming to you, especially like right uh -huh. now, like one of the people that we have is for a towing company. And we've been having these winter storms up in Washington State. And, and yeah, like you're gonna get calls if you're a towing company, right? <laughs> right, right, so, right. But yeah, yeah. So I guess just, just uh, I understand the, the being afraid of spending money. So just invest time in in researching what to spend in because you have to you have to reinvest in your company in one way or the other. It's, it's just gonna fail if you don't do that. All right. Now, uh, tell the viewers a little bit about uh, what you do, what you're involved in, and, uh, and, and what your company is about. Yeah, sure. So um, I live up in Washington State. I'm a telecommunications contractor. And what that, what that basically means is, is I contract with third-party vendors, and um, they contract with large corporations. And when work repairs or installations of uh, low voltage cabling or like phone systems, anything kind of low voltage related, when that comes up in the area, because I have the relationship with the third party vendor, they'll send me locally. 
to do these things. So wow. I have, yeah, I have these different contracts and basically when there's work to do repairs or to do installations, they, because I'm have made a relationship with them, they'll, they'll send me out on the jobs and, and I'll get a lot of the jobs, the bigger jobs. So yeah, I don't know if that's it. It's always really hard for me to describe what I do. <laughs> but that's that's kind of like the Cliff Notes version. I I uh, I install internet and telephone services in commercial businesses. And you stay pretty busy doing that. Yeah, definitely do. Yeah, and then, I live, go ahead. Oh, I, I live up in in the Seattle area, so it's just I think whenever you're around kind of a tech central, it's really easy to find work that's related to, I mean, just construction in general, they're just building so much infrastructure up here. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to have too many excuses. Right. Not right. Now, um, I think, uh, uh, I think you mentioned when we first met, you're fairly young getting into this, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what, how old are you and what led you into having your own and getting into this business yeah so i'm 27 now wow um, yeah i started i got into the industry about eight years ago um just a family friend my dad actually helped me he talked to a family friend and, <laughs> uh, who had an electrical apprenticeship program back when i was in california so i started doing electrical and you know just started learning i really like <laughs> But I didn't like, I just kind of started recognizing things like what I wanted more so. And I didn't like getting shocked. I didn't like, <laughs> which I did. It felt like, like at least once or twice a week I'd get shocked. So I was like, okay, that's, 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 that's got to go. So <laughs> then I, had, I, I moved up, up to Washington State um, and I had a friend up here who was doing security for targets, uh -huh. security cameras, stuff like that. So he's like, hey, do you want to? I'm doing a security thing, like I could pay you more and, and you could learn how to do this. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I worked, I, I worked with him for quite a long time and, and uh, you know, kind of established rapport and, and got my training doing telecommunication stuff. And then, um, and then I got last year, I got a big contract um, with a company that's, that's based in Colorado who was helping me get a bunch of work through this, this area. And, and that just like was totally random. I was on the job and the guy was like, if you can, if you can fix this issue that we're having, they're having issues with their access control uh -huh. to the building or like key card access. He's like, if you can fix this, we had a few people out here, you can fix this. Uh, there's more to come basically. <laughs> and you know, I spent, as much time as I needed to, like, I'm not a wizard or anything. I could just spend the amount of time that I need to. And he's like, great. All right, we're going to get you going with some more stuff. And I ended up getting some projects off of that. And just, you know, once you, it's a snowball, because once you get a little bit, then you just get more confidence. And taking that first step is, is like the hardest thing. And right. I totally, I totally empathize with anyone in that position because, but there, there's like, there's just so much potential you don't even know out there for you. If you could just, you know, just get that to that tipping point, and then there's, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity there. So that's that's how I, I got into this business, and yeah, it's been a crazy year, that's so, for sure. So so would you say you had a uh, a mentor? I mean, your dad kind of introduced you to it a little bit, right? Would you say you had a mentor in this to, to help you, you know, uh, navigate these waters a little bit, or is this you, all in? So I did a lot of the, 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 the state licensing and the, the codes up in Washington state can be really, really sticky. So I, I did, I just, you know, I did a lot of my own research and just tried to figure things out. And um, I, on that front, I would say that I learned a lot just from myself, just because I had to. Um, and, you know, that comes with experience of getting, you know, if you get in trouble, you're going to learn from it, which I have, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie about that. Like it's, you know, you learn from your mistakes for sure. Um, but as far as like the, the legal and business structuring, a big thing that's helped me a lot is um, YouTube channels. Um, one wow. YouTube channel that, yeah, it's like, it's really, actually I found yours like 
uh, right around that same time, and I was looking at it, checking it out quite a bit, and that was helpful. Um, another really big channel that was helpful to me was is called uh, Valuetainment. And oh, just yeah. Goes, yeah, you know Patrick? Yeah, Bet Patrick David. Bet David. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's just, he, he just, even though he's not in our industry, he just knows, he knows what works. He knows the mindsets that work. And, and you just got to, he really helped me see that, like, just the big picture. Right. Everyone is obsessed with the short term. And, and they're obsessed with on, being an entrepreneur. So that's not a very good combo. <laughs> so he kind of brings it in perspective, like, look, you can be all, you can have all, want all this stuff, but like, here's the pathway to get it. And this is, right. this is what you got to do. So he was a big, big, big mentor for me um, on that front. So. Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome to hear, man. Yes, I do listen to uh, Patrick. And then now I listen to a lot of uh, Ed Milet. He's another mm -hmm. one that Ed Milet. You should check him out. He's another one that, that um, similar to Patrick Ben David, give real life uh, scenarios and, and, and cover a wide variety of things with business, you know, and just give some practical answers, you know? Um, yeah. So that's good. That's good. Um, uh, looking into that. Um, um, one thing I want to ask while you're into this, um, Definitely, as a construction entrepreneur, as someone that's that's into this and 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 fully doing this, you have to face somewhat of a failure, you know, or, or feeling as if you you failed. Because I think a lot of things that that goes unspoken in this journey is the mental, right? And 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 how we deal with it because we got a lot of pressure. Uh, so, so how do you how do you deal with failure and 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 this pressure and and that 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 voice that talks when it's quiet? 